All right, so let's try this again. I ended up uh, installing the SSD drive and I was going to go to show the process of ghosting over a hard drive to an SSD drive. And uh, this thing decided that I wanted to do a update. Gotta love having a new computer or a new uh, install of Windows, regardless what type of Windows it is, and wanting it to grab updates off of Microsoft. So, all right. So I installed the SSD drive in the second bay on the under part of the computer. It has a bay on this side, which is the primary bay, a couple of screws, and a little switch, and it pops out. Now, the bad thing about some of these laptops, um, replacing the main hard drive with an SSD drive sometimes doesn't work. So be aware of that. You might have to uh, remove this drive and then put the SSD drive in the second bay and let it run from there as far as booting. Might have to go into BIOS and tell it to boot from that drive. We'll see. At least that's what I had to do with the other laptop of this same one. This is the Dell Precision. This is the M6800. And yes, dude, I got a Dell. So right now it takes a little bit to boot up as far as from a dead stop. So it's at a dead stop right now. And I'm going to press the button. One, two, three. And then I'm also going to do a thing where I am going to uh, do a comparison of how fast. So it is registering or recognizing the second hard drive that's inside of here, which is the, I kind of like these Western Digitals, these blue ones. I picked up another one. This is a 500 gig. Now, you could also, if you wanted to install an SSD drive and ghost over the information. You could do it by using a patch cord like this, which is USB on one side and SATA drive on the other. Now, sometimes this will work, sometimes this won't work. So, all right, so she's booting up right now. And uh, all right, she's into an operating system, but the operating system is not yet been uh, cloned over to the SSD drive and what right now I just have to wait for AVAS to boot up and uh, then I can start my procedure. Now AVAS is a free antivirus software. You could pay for it and get more out of it or you can get the free basic version off of AVAS.com. Uh, I am not associated with them whatsoever but I do use their product and their product works pretty damn well. Now Replacing memory and putting a new hard drive in a computer is really a basic thing. It's not that freaking hard. Uh, what's complicated is changing out a CPU. You know, depending on the motherboard that you have, you have to match up a CPU for the socket on the of the motherboard, and find out what that how uh, fast of a CPU you can match with that motherboard. Also, with memory, you want to make sure that if you're using multiple sticks, they're all of the same kind, not mixed and matched. Um, and you want to make sure that those sticks of memory are compatible for the CPU and your motherboard that you're running. So in all this time that I've been basically blabbing, it has not booted up AVAS quite yet. Usually it'll show up in the corner over here. And uh, so far, I have not seen it. I'll just zoom in a little bit more. Get a closer look of the screen. You should be able to see AVAS pop in. And, uh, yep, it just popped in now. So, all right, first thing I'm going to do is I want to go to this PC, which is usually uh, my computer. Right-click on it. Go to Properties. Go to Device Manager and make sure that the hard drive is recognized by the computer so you go to disk drives double click it all right so i'm looking at here let me see if i could zoom in a little bit more on this what i'm looking at here is the hard drive that is inside here right now and then on underneath that is the wdc which is the 500 gig hard drive the, the ssd drive so it is seeing or showing that it is there and i close this and then I'll go to this PC, which is my computer, and I will check to see, yep, there it is. Here is 400 and, was it, 464, 
free out of a 465 gigabyte hard drive it should be completely empty there should be nothing on it all right so let's go ahead with the process of starting up the ghosting now there is a program that i use I will put a link to their website uh, at the bottom in the description. It's pretty damn simple and it's free and it works very well. It's not too bad. So I'm going to bring that up right now. And I tell it yes. All right, so here she is. Now I want to, I don't know what this is here, but I want to get rid of that. Uh, let's see here. That's not what I want. Let me close this up because I'm restart it again because all right, this is what I want. So I like I said, I've already tried doing this before, so it's showing here that there's a history of this. Uh, and like I said, Windows decided it wanted to update and I had to start all over. So what I want to do right now is click clone disk. So it's showing me my C drive right now, and it gives you the number of the drive that you're looking at, and it shows here the two sections of Windows that's installed on that drive. Now, this, this hard drive has not been partitioned, even though it looks like it has, it has not. So I want to select clone drive. This is what I'm selecting. And so it should be grabbing both of these. So let's see. All right. Starting from scratch. So I need to drop this down here. Drop this down here. All right. So right now it's showing that I have, this is the disk one. And it gives the name of the disk that's embedded on the drive. And then it shows to disk 2, which is the Western Digital, and gives the name that's embedded on the drive. So what I want to do is I want to go to Next. This is a schedule. I don't do a scheduler, so I just skip over that. Hit Next. This is showing here what it's about to do. So you have the uh, source disk, which is the disk 1. And basically, you're going to be ghosting it uh, to disk 2. And so it says destination disk. And then here it just shows the what it's going to be doing when it starts doing this. So you hit finish. Now, I don't want to save this. I just want to run the backup. Otherwise, it will save a copy of what you just did to your documents or whatever as being a file called clone. And I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit... OK. And it should start doing it. I hit continue. OK. Oh, forgot about that. Got to check this box. Hit continue. And it should start doing this. The reason why that popped up is because I've already did this already. And because of the Windows updates, I wanted the Windows updates to be on that drive as well. So I'm doing it again. Hence the whole, you know, why I'm making this video again. Now, this is going to take a while to do. Now, right now, it's showing current progress, but overall progress hasn't even moved yet. Right now, it's just verifying everything it's going to be doing. It's checking the file systems and everything else, and now it's going to start to attempt, uh, attempt to clone. And here we go. Now, this is going to take a while, so I'm not going to let you guys sit here and kind of stare at the screen for all this time. So I'm going to basically... Uh, Stop the camera, and you guys go have a cigarette or something, and I'll come right back. All right, so it's done. As you're looking at right now is the second hard drive that's inside of here. It basically has all the files needed to be a bootable hard drive. It should be a carbon copy. So I'm going to close this. This took uh, 7 minutes and 25 seconds to complete first time I did this it took 17 minutes to complete so I click OK verifies it everything's done close it and now I want to close the program up so I want to go back to this PC my computer 
and now I am showing it should be showing pretty much the same as far as the size of the uh, file goes it should be about pretty much the same or pretty close to it this one here is showing that it's got a hundred and nineteen gigabytes free which that is the operating system this side here is the SSD drive, which is showing that it has uh, 423 gigabytes free. So it's pretty roughly close to what it's supposed to be. So now what I want to do is I want to shut the computer down. Hopefully it's not going to bitch about any updates or anything. And the next thing I want to do is swap out the hard drive and put the SSD drive in its place to see if it's going to boot off from the main uh, hard drive slot. So I'm going to put you guys on pause again. This shouldn't be that long. And I will start the video when I'm ready to, uh, when I'm ready to video, I guess. So hold on. All right, so right now we are looking at the inside of the Dell. Now the main hard drive is right here. You got four screws to remove. Uh, one, two, three here. Make sure you keep the screws off to the side. And then there is a fifth screw on the lock, which is right here, that locks that drive in, which is a different size screw. Now you want to make sure you unplug this thing first. Pop that out, and here is the main hard drive for this unit. Now, this is kind of nice. It's pretty easy. Kind of push on the drive a little bit, and there shouldn't be any screws in here. I just want to make sure of that. Okay, here we go. Push on the drive a little bit, and it should pop out. And get the puppy to pop out. There we go. Might have to take a little manhandling to do this, but it will it will definitely come out. All right, so that's the spare hard drive now. Now I want to unscrew the caddy from this side. This is the SSD drive. Slide that back. Pull that out. I end up putting some screws inside here to hold it in place. I want to remove the screw. Now, I am not going to put the caddy back in just yet because this is going to be a test. I don't, do not know if this is going to work with this drive or not. So, what I want to do is I'm going to slide this back into place. Click it back in. I'm not going to screw it down. Like I said, this is going to be a test. So, I'm not quite sure if that drive is going to stay in that bay or not. Like I said, with these Dells, sometimes you have to switch the bays from one to another. Move these screws off the side. Turn this a little bit. Plug this thing back in. Open this puppy back up. And I want to adjust my camera so you guys can see this. Zoom in a little bit on the screen. Adjust the camera some more. Sorry about all the moving around. Now, if it's not going to boot, it's not going to boot. So, what I want to do is see if I can do it this way. Get into BIOS. If it'll let me get into BIOS. <clears throat> All right, so we're in BIOS right now. Now, what I need to do is I need to go to Boot Sequence. And let's see, is it showing it? So we got disk drive, we got internal hard drive, we have storage, uh, CD-ROM drive, DVD uh, writer, and then onboard NIC, which I don't think there's an onboard NIC on this. All right, so it's saying disk drive as being the first. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this and see if it boots off of that drive bay. If not, then I'm going to have to put it back into secondary. (laughs) 
Oh, voila. It's actually going to boot off of that drive bay. The other Dell did not do that. And you see how fast it's already booted up. And now I just have to wait for AVAS to pop up. And now AVAS has popped up. So you see how fast it booted up already. Now I want to go to this PC, which is my computer. And it's showing, now it's showing as being a local disk drive C. And what I want to do is I want to go to right click on my PC, go to properties, go to device manager and check to disk drives. And it's showing me that it is the Western Digital. That's it. Close that up. Uh, yeah, so everything looks like it's okay. Let's go to select all and delete. Go to task manager. Let me bring this up bigger so you can see it. And I want to go into performance. So this is my CPU right now, and it's showing me that it's a 2.8 uh, gigahertz um, socket one, four cores, eight logical processors. Now this looks different than it does on uh, Windows 7. So let's see the disk drive, disk C. Um, System disk, yes. Page filing, yes. Formatted, uh, 466. Cap, uh, uh, capacity is 466, well, 500. And it's showing me up here that is the Western Digital. The Western Digital up here showing me, yeah. I am happy. Uh, memory inside of this thing right now is uh, 16 gigs. It's I'm only using two sockets out of the four. So it's basically 16 gigabytes of uh, DDR3. So right now, I'm going to reboot it. I'm going to shut it completely down. And then let's show a comparison of firing this thing up now. Once it's fully booted. All right, it's booted. It's, it, or it's shut down now. So I'm going to fire this thing up. One, One two, two, three. 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 <laughs> Big difference compared to what it was. Now I wait for AVAS to pop-up which is down here in the corner yes I made and because this is a high-resolution screen I made basically everything very small on it so I have more screen and AVAS just popped up so I have more screen space all right so that's how you end up taking a SSD drive and uh, ghosting a regular hard drive to it I will put a link at the bottom to grab that file from the website and uh, just make sure you go for the free one. Now, this hard drive here is also a 500 gig hard drive, uh, Seagate, which isn't a bad, they're not bad at all. I can put this back in and use this as a secondary, like a backup drive to put files on it, or I can get another SSD drive and install it on here and use that as a backup for, uh, for files and different shit. Um, can also do a thing where you make a restore disk on a second hard drive in case everything ever happens to this hard drive works out perfect so you guys take care have a good one i hope this helps you out it's if you guys are trying to ghost over a hard drive from one to an ssd drive ssd drives are much faster and they work out a lot better in the long run at least i think so because i already kind of burned out quite a few of these guys in my past so all right, take it easy. Have a good one.
closer look of the screen, you should be able to see AVAS pop in. And uh, yep, it just popped in now.